and I've been experimenting with NMN and Resveratrol and I've, of course, I've read your book twice and uh, I followed your work and there's so much. I'm actually experimenting with something that might strike your interest. Uh, I, I combined, I tested NMN and Resveratrol first and uh, then in large quantities to see what happens. Then I went back to the proper dose. Uh, then I tested doing it in a liposome. Mm -hmm. Like I got NMN powder and resveratrol powder and uh, I put some sunflower lecithin and I broke it with uh, ultrasonic waves yes. and I was able to get way better results with that even with a smaller dose because of the absorbability okay. in this what, case. What, what do you mean by results? Uh, that's, the, that's the interesting part. So when I first tried NMN and resveratrol, um, I started with a low dose and then I started to increase it uh, uh, in the powder form. I started with a low dose and then I started to increase it gradually. And uh, then I really increased it to a very high dose to see what happens. So wow. like not very, very high, but like two grams each twice mm -hmm. a day. Mm -hmm. That was a high, this is a high dose, right? <laughs> yeah, right. That's, that's four times what I take, yeah. Yeah, it's a very high dose. When I did that, I actually got extreme um, like pressure in the head. And uh, at one, one night, like two days into that experiment, uh, my nose started bleeding out of nowhere. So I knew it. <laughs> yeah, I knew it. I knew it was time to stop. <laughs> it thinned your blood, probably. <laughs> yeah. So I stopped. I, I stopped that immediately, and I went back to the normal dose, which was like half a gram each uh, every day. I take it with MCT oil. I, uh, I because I'm assuming it's fat soluble, so I have to do that. And uh, then I stopped taking the powder form, and uh, I started taking the liposome. Forum, which I did uh, the way I told you and uh, since this first day I think I'm noticing like increased activity I'm noticing I didn't notice that with the powder form I noticed increased activity with the liposome form and then my friends started to ask asking to get, get some and I gave some to my friends and like they started experimenting with it and they and they're experiencing similar results along with like um, I don't know how to, like face like the skin of the face is also more vibrant and it looks better. Yeah. So yeah, I'm seeing results with the liposome form and uh, well, you I know to, you know that I I have my poor man's version which is my yogurt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I actually I actually was just eating it when you called. Um, yeah, let let me show you something. Um, yeah. So this is how I have my two spoonfuls of yogurt every day. I just finished it. Beautiful. So you, you know, you can still see. Yeah. That in there. And then, uh, and then I'm still having my coffee mm -hmm. with NMN. So I, I show you that um, only because you know a lot of people just say what they think is right, or even they lie. Yeah. Whereas you know, you and I are really living it. Um, yeah. And what, what we say, we're doing. We're we're very. Uh, accurate and truthful about what we're doing. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I could yeah. say, oh, I take in a man and yogurt every day and then maybe eat it once a week and I'm just lying. But now that you've seen, this is my breakfast Yeah. with you today. Um, anyway, so I take four of these. These That's, that's the NMN. And the, the resveratrol was dissolved in this. Mm -hmm. So this is water soluble. This is um, not. So uh, the, lip the liposomes are for, for what? Both molecules or just one? Uh, for both molecules, I'm putting like maybe four grams uh, each, NMN and resveratrol, with about, let's say, 20 grams of uh, sunflower lecithin. Uh, I dissolve it in maybe 100 ml of water, and then I break it in an ultrasonic uh, machine, which I actually built myself. So <laughs> I like to experiment. Uh, it's my thing. So, so the ratio yeah. of sunflower less than in water is what? Uh, mm -hmm. Like four grams, four grams with 20 grams oh. of sunflower less, less than in 100 ml of water, approximately. It's not accurate. I didn't base it on anything. I just found, I thought that would be a proper ratio. Uh, and I honestly, like I use like five drops of that three times a day and I'm experiencing results. Mm -hmm. But when I took the powder, I didn't really experience anything significant. I wasn't sure of the results. Well, did with the did you use resveratrol in anything or used ate the powder resveratrol? Um, with the liposome or with the, when I first experimented with it? When you first had the powder with resveratrol, did you mix it with anything? 
uh, MCT oil. I took it with MCT oil capsules. Oh. Okay. Yeah, because I'm basically vegan, so I didn't use the yogurt. Um, I just used, I, I reasoned that MCT oil should. should do the trick. Yeah. yeah, I would have thought so. Hmm. Mm -hmm. It's worth pointing out that the things that I'm talking about today haven't been proven to work in humans, right? We're talking about anecdotal evidence. Uh, but there is a lot of evidence in animal studies so far, uh, mostly mouse studies. Yeah. You know? uh, and, you know, the skeptics would say mice don't prove anything. And, and it's true, they don't prove anything. Yeah. But they are some guide. If something fails in a mouse, it's probably going to fail in a human. If it works in a mouse, it has a chance to work in a human. Probably, um, that's yeah. usually the rule. Um, and so, yeah, we've been doing human studies more recently on NAD boosters, um, a, a relative of NMN. It's called MIV626. And it is, uh, it's, it's, there's no safety issue so far. And, uh, but it's, it's not a, a huge dose like, like you were taking. Um, yeah. People have to be very careful, I think, with these substances, right? Because they haven't been tested rigorously. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that, that's the, the warning. I don't want to come across as, uh, you know, a scientist saying we should all be testing things in our bodies because you have to be not just careful, but you have to, like you and me, monitor our bodies to make sure that we're not doing any harm or Absolutely. seemingly not doing any harm. Uh, and uh, yeah, so in, unless you're working with a doctor and having blood tests, so tomorrow I'm going to have a blood test to see how things are going. Yeah. And, you know, if I, if I did see changes in liver enzymes, which might show some toxicity, I would immediately stop. Um, yeah. so, so far, I haven't seen any issues. Makes perfect sense, of course. Yeah. Um, I, I've done some very interesting things over the past. It seems like unintentionally, I've activated two of the three uh, aging pathways. <laughs> Uh, uh, I, I deactivated, let's say. So basically, I eat uh, zero sugars and zero carbs, and uh, like completely no carbs, nothing that raises the blood sugar in any way. As in, as in, if I feel if I eat like one piece of cashew, I would feel it for the next three days. So yeah, yeah, I, I'm completely, uh, uh, yeah, I'm fueled completely by like fats, seeds, and nuts. I'm vegan, so um, I'm like a vegan keto guy don't ask me how it's going but i eat zero carbs nothing that raises blood sugar in any way and i've been doing this for the past seven years and, and you uh, you have a patch you monitor yourself so you know uh interesting thing is that i have 5.5 percent body fat and uh, i play sports every day martial arts i'm very active and uh, my blood sugar in the morning is around 85 to 90 so and I've been doing this for the past seven years. So this proves everything you're doing experimentally, I, I suppose. So I'm, I'm activating the uh, aging path pathways, the insulin pathway and the mTOR pathway. I'm deactivating them. Like, I don't know. It's just uh, like, this is what, how, how, what experimentation took me. This is the path. I didn't read it in any book. This is just how I felt comfortable going through the years. And uh, this is what I ended up with. Right. Uh, well, it's an interesting diet, um, yeah. Because carnivorism, I'm I'm not convinced is healthy in the long run. It'll help you build muscle, of course, but right. there's no experiments that I've seen that say eating a lot of meat is long term beneficial. The uh, and also, like you said, if you eat carbs, I, I'm I'm also a, I don't like carbs at all. Um, I yeah. think based on the evidence that keeping blood sugar um, steady and low is is good um, as long as you don't feel affected in your daily life or or faint. Um, yeah. And I, I've actually gone to the um, to get one of these glucose monitors that you stick in your arm, and it, it shocked me what uh, the foods I was eating did to my blood sugar. Just yeah. um, a few bites of sushi with rice shot it through the roof. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and then I also found that my body produces sugar in the morning, naturally, and I don't need breakfast. I f I'm totally fine. And yeah. in fact, if I eat br a big breakfast, I feel sick. And it's probably because my body is an, is an early glucose producer. Some people are different. Some people um, feel faint in the morning. They need food to get going. 
and sometimes they're doing a big workout, which I, I cannot do in the morning. Um, so the point here is uh, everybody is different um, and you need to pay attention to your body uh, and work with it. Um, I, I seriously came to the conclusion that sugar acts like a drug, but once you stop that gradually and wisely, of course, your body gets accustomed to taking its energy from fat, which we call keto. And uh, then um, if, like, if I eat, I can't eat onions anymore, I can't eat carrots anymore. Because once I eat it, I'm bothered by it. It's like my body switches back to taking simple glucose, and it doesn't want that. It's uh, it's happy taking it from flax seeds and seeds and nuts and veggies and yeah seaweeds and like similar stuff. And that's that's another question. Uh, you are ad an advocate of metformin uh, because you're seeing a lot of um, um, benefits from using it, health-wise and uh, consider considering aging as well, right? My question is, yeah. why don't we just stop eating sugar and starch and get these results naturally instead of blocking glucose absorption with metformin? Uh, well, I'm, I'm not an advocate. Uh, I don't advocate or recommend anything. Um, yeah. But I do speak about the science, and I've read many papers on this topic. Um, there, are, there are two main points. One is that uh, it, it's always better to do it naturally than to take a molecule or a drug, a supplement yeah. drug. So you're right about that. But where I think it's important to, to discuss is the point that metformin seems to do more than just lower blood sugar. Um, we don't know how metformin works. It seems to work both on the, the muscle, on the fat, and even on the microbiome. Yeah. Uh, so it's quite possible that just keeping low glucose isn't sufficient to mimic metformin. I don't know if the kind of diet you're taking, if it was tested on 100,000 people, would also, like metformin, reduce cancer, heart disease, frailty, and Alzheimer's. Yeah. So, you know, there's, I'm always driven by the data, and 100,000 people in a publication will always override logic and uh, anecdote. Yeah, I get it. I get it. So we showed way back in the early 2000s that the these plant molecules do activate uh, the same pathways, many of the same pathways as fasting and exercise. Yeah. Um, and that was a revelation. That that was surprising to people. Now we take it for granted that you can trigger fasting without fasting using molecules yeah. From, yeah. from plants. Uh, so yeah, I do believe that if I take but when I take resveratrol in the morning, uh, it will activate CERT1. And CERT1, we've actually shown, at least in mice, that CERT1 is actively promoting blood vessel growth and mitochondrial function, just like fasting and exercise would do. Um, I try to do both because uh, we, it looks like they're additive. If we give resveratrol to mice that only eat every second day, those are the ones that live the longest. So combining fasting and or exercise with these molecules, I think is the best solution. Um, I, I think of, of the longevity pathways as a piano and you can't just smash one key uh, or smash with your fist and hope it plays beautiful music. You will wanna play the symphony and we don't know what the symphony is yet. Um, it's still early days, we were all born one generation too early for us to to know this for a fact and that's why you know I'm willing to talk about it because uh, I think that at a minimum we can have millions of people live healthier lives based on the science right now yeah absolutely